The Life and Sad Ending of Jaco Pastorius John Francis Pastorius was born December 1, 1951, in Norristown, Pennsylvania. He was the oldest of three boys born to Stephanie, his Finnish mother, and Jack Pastorius, a singer and jazz drummer who spent much of his time on the road. His family moved to Oakland Park near Fort Lauderdale when he was eight. Pastorius' nickname, Yako, became adopted, and was partially influenced by his love for sports as well as the umpire Jocko Conlon. In 1974, he began spelling it Yako after it was misspelled by his neighbor, pianist Alex Darkey. His brother called him Mowgli after the wild boy in the Jungle Book because he was energetic and spent much of his time shirtless on the beach, climbing trees, running through the woods, and swimming in the ocean. He attended St. Clement's Catholic School in Wilton Manors and was an altar boy at St. Clement's Church. His confirmation name was Anthony, thus expanding his name to John Francis Anthony Pastorius. He was intensely competitive and excelled at baseball, basketball, and football. He played drums until he injured his wrist playing football when he was 13. The damage was severe enough to warrant corrective surgery and inhibited his ability to play the drums. Music has been a close friend of his life. Jaco Pastorius did not choose to marry. He chooses to dedicate himself to passion and art, the joy of doing things he loves, and he is rewarded with popularity and as well as less loneliness for his short life. His passion blossomed when he was 17 years old. Pastorius had begun to appreciate jazz and had saved enough money to buy an upright bass. Its deep, mellow tone appealed to him, though it strained his finances. He had difficulty maintaining the instrument, which he attributed to the humidity in Florida. When he woke one day to find it had cracked, he traded it for a 1962 Fender Jazz Bass. Pastorius played a number of Fender Jazz Basses over the years, but the most famous was a 1962 jazz bass that he called the Bass of Doom. When he was 21, Pastorius acquired the bass, which was modified by removing the frets. It is unclear when the frets were removed, as his recollections varied over the years. One story is that he used a common butter knife to remove the frets, and sealed the fretboard with epoxy resin. Until about 1970. Most jazz bassists played the acoustic, upright bass, also known as the double bass. At the time, with few exceptions, bassists typically remained in the background with the drummer, forming the rhythm section, while the saxophonist, trumpeter, or vocalist handled the melody and led the band. Pastorius had other ideas for the bass player. He played an electric bass from which he had removed the frets. He played fast and loud sang, and did flips. He spread powder on the stage so he could dance like James Brown. He joked around and talked to the crowd. A self-described Florida beach bum, he often went barefoot and shirtless. He was tall, lean, and strong, and for someone who played sports the nickname Jocko fit. His thumbs were double-jointed and his fingers were long and thin. He was noted for virtuosic bass lines which combined Afro-Cuban rhythms, inspired by the likes of Cachao Lopez, with R&B to create 16th note funk lines syncopated with ghost notes. He played these with a movable anchor thumb technique on the right hand, anchoring on the bridge pickup while playing on the E and a strings and muting the E string with his thumb while playing on higher strings. Examples include Come On. Come over from the album Yako Pastorius and the Chicken from the Birthday Concert. In his teens, he played bass guitar for Wayne Cochran and the CC Riders. In the early 1970s, Pastorius taught bass at the University of Miami, where he befriended jazz guitarist Pat Metheny, who was also on the faculty. With Paul Blay, Pastorius and Metheny recorded an album, later titled Yako. Pastorius then played on Matheny's debut album, Bright Size Life. Before recording his debut album, Pastorius attended a concert in Miami by the jazz fusion band Weather Report. After the concert, he approached keyboardist Joe Zawinul, 
who led the band. Other recordings included work on four Joni Mitchell albums between 1976 and 1980 and Al Di Miola's Land of the Midnight Sun, released in 1976. Near the end of his career, he worked often with guitarist Mike Stern, guitarist Borelli Legreen, and drummer Brian Melvin. Pastorius appeared as a guest on many albums by other artists, including Ian Hunter of Mott the Hoople, and recorded a solo on the title track of his album All American Alien Boy in 1976. Columbia, in 1976 after bassist Alfonso Johnson left Weather Report, Zawinul asked Pastorius to join the band. Pastorius made his band debut on the album Black Market, in which he shared the bass chair with Johnson. Pastorius was fully established as sole band bass player for the recording of Heavy Weather, which contained the Grammy-nominated hit Birdland. In 1977 he can be heard on Erto Morera's album I Am Fine, How Are You? His signature sound is prominent on Flora Porum's Every Day Every Night in 1978, on which he played the bass melody for a Michel Colombier composition entitled The Hope, and performed bass and vocals on one of his own compositions, entitled Los Olas. Pastorius received two Grammy Award nominations in 1977 for his self-titled debut album, one for Best Jazz Performance by a Group and one for Best Jazz Performance by a Soloist. In 1978, he received a Grammy nomination for Best Jazz Performance by a Soloist for his work on Weather Report's album Heavy Weather. Despite attention in the press, word of mouth sold poorly. Warner Brothers was unimpressed by the demo tapes from Holiday for Pans. Pastorius released a third album, Invitation 1983, a live recording from the word of mouth tour of Japan. As alcohol and drug problems dominated his life, he had trouble finding work and wound up becoming homeless. In 1985, while filming an instructional video, Pastorius told the interviewer, Jerry Jimmett, that although he had been praised often for his ability, he wished that someone would give him a job. In 1986 the bass was repaired by luthiers Kevin Kaufman and Jim Hamilton after it had been broken into many pieces. After the repair Pastorius recorded a session with Mike Stern, then the bass was stolen from a park bench in Manhattan in 1986. Pastorius used the variant EQ controls on his two acoustic 360 amplifiers to boost the midrange frequencies, thus accentuating the natural growling tone of his fretless passive Fender jazz bass and round wound string combination. He also controlled his tone color with a rack mount MXR digital delay unit that fed a second acoustic amp rig. Fender began offering a fretless version of their standard jazz bass in the mid-1980s, and in 1999 began offering the Fender Yako Pastorius jazz bass in their artist series, and custom shop series. Bass Player Magazine gave him second place on a list of the 100 greatest bass players of all time, behind James Jamerson. After his death in 1987, he was voted, by readers of Downbeat Magazine, to its Hall of Fame, joining bassists Jimmy Blanton, Ray Brown, Ron Carter, Charles Mingus, Charlie Hayden, and Milt Hinton. These instruments were modeled on the base of Doom, with the custom shop version featuring a fretboard sealed with epoxy resin. In the 2000s Fender's budget brand Squire offered the Squire Vintage Modified Fretless Jazz Bass which was also reminiscent of Yako's instrument. That is the remaining nostalgia about him. Everything will remain ingrained in the subconscious of the music lover. Pastorius was hospitalized for multiple facial fractures and injuries to his right eye and left arm and fell into a coma. There were encouraging signs that he would come out of the coma and recover, but they soon faded. A brain hemorrhage a few days later led to brain death. He was taken off life support and died on September 21, 1987 at the age of 35 at Broward General Medical Center in Fort Lauderdale. On December 2, 2007, the day after his birthday, 
a concert called 20th Anniversary Tribute to Jaco Pastorius was held at Broward Center for the Performing Arts in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Almost 20 years after his death, Fender released the Jaco Pastorius Jazz Bass, a fretless instrument in its artist series. He has been called arguably the most important and groundbreaking electric bassist in history and perhaps the most influential electric bassist today. Dear Jaco Pastorius, we always miss you.